Well, today is our day uh, monthly transformational stories update, and today we are very blessed to have Sandy Schilling sharing her story. And I'm going to invite Sandy to come on up and um, please open your heart and listen to her story of transformation. Thank you, Jane. Um, I just want you to know it's a, a pleasure and an honor to be able to share my story with you. So I'm going to give you the abridged version, and I'm going to read in the interest of time. I call uh, 2010 my trifecta year. I had three major life-changing events in the first six months. My oldest son, Jake, uh, in February, he tried to drown himself in our hot tub. And uh, I recognized it was a cry for help. His dad and I had been avoiding conflict for years in an unsatisfied marriage. And uh, everyone in the house was affected by the tension of walking on eggshells. I knew a divorce is imminent, but then as my son started to stabilize in June, uh, the anger and resentment I had held in gave me breast cancer. My son's suicide attempt, separation of an 18-year marriage, and breast cancer were big wake-up calls for me. While I was terrified I would lose my oldest son, I quickly realized that I couldn't keep him safe by myself. I knew that he had to find his own reasons for living and that I needed help getting him to see his own worth. I had been attending Unity on and off with my younger son, Shane, and I felt so safe and supported when I came. I, I think I cried every meditation for the first six months I was ever here. I was so deeply touched that I was able to feel my own grief and recognize the healing that needed to take place in all of us. As my son was admitted to Sacred Heart Adolescent Psych Unit by his own choice, I walked into the YOU room and uh, Diane and Craig Bader were there with the youth and I begged them to help me um, get Jake what he needed. Uh, he needed to connect with them and get support once he was discharged. They, every one of them made him cards and I delivered those cards that day with a promise to Jake that I would make our home a safe place for him to express his emotions. I knew that my marriage had been unsatisfying for years and a divorce was imminent, but I wasn't going to give up until my kids were out of high school for fear that uh, we'd have custody issues and um, uh, although I suffered my own emotional pain keeping the family together, I just didn't realize how much it was affecting my sons. I, I just felt like I couldn't quit my marriage no matter how difficult it was for me. Uh, I felt like I might be a failure and end up divorced like everyone else, except my parents. Um, the suicide uh, attempt was a slap in the face, and I saw the pain that my son was in, uh, never mind my own pain, which I had been suppressing for years. Uh, I had compensated by working, exercising, managing the family schedule. Uh, I was distracted with busyness. But now, uh, thinking about being a divorcee, I would not only be a single mom of teenage sons, I was facing breast cancer treatment that included a mastectomy. I would lose a part of me that nourished my children and at the time I thought defined me as a woman. How could I ever possibly find a partner who would love me without breasts? Even more agonizing was the option of removing both breasts or the, the decision to do that since the risk of cancer returning was so high. As a nurse practitioner and healthcare provider, I felt obligated to follow the recommendations of the specialists, but inside my soul was screaming, no, I, I never for a minute thought that I would die from breast cancer, not for a minute. Even after a second surgery took my lymph nodes and then I had infections and then I had to do chemotherapy and that plunged me into early menopause, not fun. Um, by the time uh, you know they wanted to do radiation after the chemotherapy, I finally found the strength to say no uh, because I had finally found the blessing of breast cancer, the silver lining. 
Just after my breast cancer diagnosis, my old friend of 25 years and former teenage fling came running to my rescue. He, uh, he helped fix my car when it left me stranded at yoga. He watched the dogs so I could go to the lake. And he let me talk about my fear of surgery and divorce. And he took me on motorcycle rides away from my terrifying life. With Ray, I felt so safe. I could tell him anything, and we were always honest with each other, and I trusted him completely. I knew he would do anything for me, and I loved the good father and devoted caregiver to his mom that he had become. I just didn't know that he had loved me all those years. <laughs> Cancer is a great truth serum. <laughs> um, he swore to help me get through the divorce, and the treatment, and I told him how much he meant to me. The qualities I had desired in a life partner that I had envisioned and actually listed at a women's retreat were right in front of me. It was the beginning of a true partnership of mutual support. Uh, Ray became a role model for my sons, as well as joining me as a youth sponsor for YOU. He, uh, we attended Financial Peace University, Parenting with Love and Logic, the Q process, meditation classes, spirit group. Over the years, um, he had, has really been a partner. And we both have seen how the power of spirit can heal, how our thoughts create our behaviors and our perceptions of reality. After the Two long years of breast cancer treatment and reconstruction, I decided to put cancer behind me and follow my dream of going back to school one last time for my doctorate. And uh, after five years of hard work, I was awarded my doctorate degree in nursing practice. Thank you. It was great. Um, it really wouldn't have been possible without my partner by my side and um, support from all my loved ones. My oldest son, Jake, graduated the same year with his bachelor's degree, and my younger son, uh, Shane, who many of you have uh, met, is a Marine, and he's distinguished himself as a leader in the Marines. He's a White House NCO, and he credits um, part of his success to being a youth counselor at kids' camp for many years. So last August, the story's not over, <laughs> last August, after struggling with what I thought was arthritis for several years, I had another wake-up call. Um, I, I don't listen to the subtle uh, messages very well, uh, but that's changing. Though, though I learned uh, unity principles, I'd just kind of begun to practice them. I wanted a deeper practice of daily meditation. Uh, but I was so busy with just like five or six part-time jobs, I was a volunteer, I had an active social life. Um, I knew I needed to stop my habitual busyness, but I just didn't know how. Uh, when the MRI of my hip showed a tumor in the hip socket, I thought the breast cancer might be back, but no. Um, to my surprise, and with an ironic twist of fate, I told you I was done with breast cancer, the biopsy came back, metastatic stage four non-small cell lung cancer, the kind that non-smokers get. Um, so nothing like a terminal diagnosis to stop you in your tracks. But I'm glad to report uh, that one year later, uh, the tumors in my chest and brain are all but disappeared from radiation and oral chemotherapy. Uh, the hip tumor is also gone because the bone had crumbled after radiation and about four months ago I had my left hip rebuilt with titanium. So I am an iron woman now. <laughs> I am also maintaining a regular daily meditation practice using some of Joe Dispenza's methods as well as others and I've quit all five or six part-time jobs. I traded them in for one 32-hour week job, so I'm working on work-life balance. And I no longer need the distraction of busyness, and I've released my workaholic tendencies for the most part. Um, my faith is stronger than ever, and I trust that I am exactly where I was, I'm supposed to be. There's nothing more for me to do and all I need to do is be the light for others. I am grateful for every day, 
every day for my partner Ray, who I finally married with the help from Jackie and Wayne Green last October, right here in the chapel. It was a beautiful day. Um, our future is bright, and I've realized that I am special. I am a walking miracle. I'm, I'm not a statistic. I'm an outlier. I'm a survivor. Uh, I'm in an elite club. I'm one of 1% of people who get to have two different kinds of cancers, but also to achieve my goals and dreams and to really deepen my, the spiritual meaning in my life. Uh, that's been the most important and rewarding part. And I couldn't have done it without the loving help from my partner, my family, um, countless friends, and of course all of my Unity family here. Thank you so very much.